Hi, this is Dr. Cassandra Quave, and in this lecture we'll be discussing remedial plants used for the treatment of conditions of the sensory organs, um, in particular the eyes and ears. The learning objectives for this lesson are to be able to identify some of the botanical sources of medicines used in the treatment of diverse eye problems, including glaucoma, um, ocular inflammation, uveitis, and infection. We'll also discuss botanical remedies for ear infections. And lastly, we'll cover what some of the mechanisms of action are for these therapies. Here's the list of key species that we'll be discussing in this lesson. Um, in particular, we'll talk about Euphrasia species for or eyebright for the treatment of eye inflammation. We'll discuss the use of, um, of species that have or exert a meiotic impact on the pupil. Um, for the treatment of glaucoma. This comes from Pilocarpus and Physostigma species. We'll discuss um, the deadly nightshade or Atropa belladona and the treatment of anterior uveitis and also for um, reduction of ocular pressure. And we'll also discuss um, um, Erythroxylum coca for the same purpose. Lastly, we'll talk a bit about the use of certain plant oils, in particular Prunus amygdalus and Olea europaea oils and the removal of excessive cerumen or earwax. And lastly, the mixture of anti-infective plants with olive oil to, again, treat ear infections. Before we jump into those different plants, I wanted to take a moment to discuss a little bit about the anatomy of the eye. As you can see here in this picture, the eye um, has a lot of surrounding glands and lacrimal glands and ducts that are associated with the lacrimal process or tear formation process. And you have a flow of tears that generally follows this pathway of going from the lacrimal gland into these excretory ducts, um, into the superior or the inferior lacrimal canals, the lacrimal sac, and then nasolacrimal duct and nasal cavity. A really important constituent of tears is the presence of lysozymes. Now, lysozymes have important anti-infective properties. As you can see on this, the upper right side of the screen, there is a petri dish that has had bacteria spread on it, and the disc that has tears on it has shown um, inhibitory activity again against bacterial growth. So for your eyes, tears are very important, not only for keeping the eyes moist, um, for cleaning out other types of um, uh, physical irritants in the eye, and it also has these anti-infective properties. Now moving on to plants, I'm going to first discuss the eyebright species. Here we have Euphrasia officinalis and also Euphrasia rusticovania. And these belong to the Orobanchaceae family. Some of the major constituents of this plant include the iridoid glycosides, such as acubin, geniposide, catalpol, lupricide, urostoside, euphricide, veronicoside, verproside, and others. It also contains lignans like coniferal glucosides and mucoviscides and tannins and polyphenolic acids, and these include gallic, caffeic, and ferulic acids. Now, Euphrasia species have had a very long history of application in the traditional treatment of eye disorders, and this is kind of evident, self-evident in its common name. This herb is found in meadows and grassy places all throughout Europe and in parts of temperate Asia. The um, Extracts of this plant have been used in um, CAM therapies or complementary alternative therapies for the treatment of conjunctivitis or eye inflammation. Conjunctivitis, of course, has many different causations, not limited to infection of bacterial or viral origin, but also you may have things like allergic conjunctivitis, for example. A very few clinical studies have been carried out, um, but there has been work with single-dose eye drops that have extracts of the herb that were evaluated in a clinical prospective cohort trial for conjunctivitis, and they um, deemed that they were um, good to very good by both patients and uh, physicians in this study. Now we're going to move on to um, glaucoma, 
And, the, and before I jump into discussion of pilocarpine, I want to kind of introduce what glaucoma is. Um, glaucoma is actually associated with increased intraocular pressure, and it can cause blindness in the patient if it's left untreated. Um, most of the drugs used today are, are these synthetic sympathomimetics. Um, some examples of this include dipevifrine and brimenonidine. Um, there are also beta blockers like timolol or prostaglandin analogs that are used. But there are also some useful plant-derived meiotics um, that can be applied. And just as a reminder, your meiotic agents, of course, are things that are drugs that can result in pupillary constriction. Now, pilocarpine, we've discussed before in prior lectures, especially with regards to um, neuromuscular effects. It belongs to, pilocarpus species belong to the citrus family or the rutaceae family. This is an alkaloid as evidenced by its cyclic nitrogen in the structure. And the way that it acts is that it um, acts directly on the cholinergic receptor sites as a sympathomimetic agent. And so it basically mimics the activity of acetylcholine. Now, how is it used? It's, um, it, oh, before I go into how it's used, you also know that pilocarpine, because it's a sympathomimetic agent, will cause salivation and tachycardia, amongst other effects, if it's taken in a systematic or a systemic manner. It's used again for its meiotic or pupil constricting properties in the tr in open angle glaucoma and to contract the pupil after the use of drugs like atropine or mydriatic agents. It is sold as a prescription only medicine in many countries. Well, let's move on to physostigmine. Um, physostigmine, like pilocarpine, is also a meiotic agent. However, the effect is shorter lasting. This is also an alkaloid, as you can tell from the structure. The mechanism of action for its pupil constriction activity is that it is a parasympathomimetic, um, and specifically it's a reversible cholinesterase inhibitor. This is a highly poisonous plant, um, as we've discussed before, and is most well known for its use in the witch trials of the Calabar region um, in Africa. Um, now, side effects, it is not as well tolerated as pilocarpine and can actually cause local irritation around the eye and also allergic reactions. Now, thus far we've spoken about two plants used for their meiotic or pupil constricting activity. Now we're going to discuss a plant used for its pupil dilatory activity or a mydriatic agent. And here you can see a picture of a dilated pupil. Um, as you know, Atropa belladona was an important cosmetic um, plant in, um, um, centuries ago. The berries, the, the juice of the berries were once squeezed into the eyes of women to, again, um, dilate their pupils to um, simulate a state of um, heightened arousal. Now, the main constituent that's active in this, in this plant is atropine, and it's actually a tropane alkaloid. Um, it is still occasionally used as eye drops at about 0.5% or ointment at a 1% preparation um, to open the iris for examination or surgical procedures, and also in the treatment of anterior uveitis. Now, Erythroxylum coca is from the Erythroxylaceae family, and this is, of course, the plant that's a source of cocaine. Um, cocaine is an alkaloid shown here on the right. Cocaine also has mydriatic activity, and it um, is also known to be a vasoconstrictor and a topical anesthetic as well, as we've discussed in the past. It can reduce intraocular pressure and is often used in combination with atropine and epinephrine. To, in the reduction of ocular pressure. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the ear. Um, in particular, I want to kind of discuss some background on the ears. Infections of the ear can be treated either with topical or systemic antibiotics in most cases um, if they're of bacterial origin. 
However, oftentimes the removal of wax um, from the ear is achieved with the use of softening agents. And this is why um, oils of almond oil, like shown here, or olive oil um, can be useful in helping to soften the cerumen. And then um, this may or may not be followed by ear syringing, which is basically rinsing of the ear canal with water. Now, olive oil is a um, comes from the Olea europea um, and the Oleaceae family. The olive oil is obtained from fruits, of course, of this tree, and it's rich in these glyceride content. Um, almond oil, on the other hand, is from the rose family. It's um, known as Prunus amygdalus. And the almond oil obtained from the seeds is also very rich in triglycerides and fatty acids and can be used um, for its softening effects.